Hello and welcome back to the second part of the Elementor Pro Sticky Header Tutorial. In the first part of the tutorial, I covered the process of importing and customizing the header template after downloading it. Now, we will explore how to create the sticky header from scratch using Elementor's Flexbox layout. However, if you prefer a simpler solution and don't wish to create it yourself, I have got you covered. I am offering ready-made flexbox and section column layout based versions of this header template for sale in my Gumroad shop at a highly affordable price of $6.99 each. But here's the exciting part, for a limited time, you can purchase both versions together as a bundle offer for only $9.99, which is a massive 28% discount from the regular price. If you want to save even more on my already affordable templates, then here is exciting news for you. If you watch the entire video without skipping, you will discover an additional 10% discount coupon code, bringing your total savings to an amazing 42%. Don't miss out on this limited time offer, head to my Gumroad store now and take advantage of these unbeatable deals. Let's now proceed with the tutorial and create the sticky header using Elementor's Flexbox layout. To begin, go to the WordPress dashboard and enable the Flexbox layout in the Elementor setting. Furthermore make sure to download all the necessary code snippets from my Gumroad shop. These code snippets will be used in the upcoming steps to create our sticky header. Now, hover over the template tab and click on the theme builder option. Next, click on the header menu located on the left side of the screen. To create a new header, click on the add new link in the top right corner. Upon clicking, a pop-up window will appear, which you can simply close. Now, let's proceed by inserting a container, which we will name the main wrapper. While the main wrapper is selected, go to the Layout tab, set the content width to full width, direction to row, justify content to center, align items to center, and gap to zero pixels. Next, switch to the Style tab, and set the background color to transparent. Afterward, switch to the Advanced tab, and set the top and bottom padding to 35 pixels, and the right and left padding to 120 pixels. In the Content tab, set the Z index field to 6x9, so that the header appears above other elements on the page. Additionally, enter the same class name as mine in the CSS classes field. Now, Expand the custom CSS field and paste the downloaded main wrapper CSS code snippet. This will apply the necessary styling to the header elements. Now here on the top, you will see several CSS variables, which I have previously explained in the first part of the video. Next, insert three containers within the main wrapper, and then proceed to rename the newly added containers one by one as mine. Now, select the logo container from the navigator. Go to the layout tab and set the content width to full width, width to 14%, direction to column, justify content to center, and align items to center. Next, switch to the advanced tab, set the padding values to zero pixels, as well as enter the same class as mine in the CSS classes field. Now, select the menu container, go to the layout tab, and set the content width to full width, width to 50%, direction to row, justify content to end, and align items to center. Next, switch to the advanced tab, set the padding and Z index values to zero, as well as enter the same class as mine in the CSS classes field. Now, select the button container, go to the layout tab, and set the content width to full width, width to 36%, direction to row, justify content to end, and align items to center. Next, switch to the advanced tab, set the padding values to zero pixels, as well as enter the same class as mine in the CSS classes field. Now, within the logo container, insert an image element. Let's call it the logo one before scroll. While the logo one is selected, go to the content tab and insert the desired version of the logo to be displayed before the scroll status of the sticky header. 
It is recommended to use a PNG format logo with dimensions of 340 pixels by 100 pixels for optimal results. Next, under the Content tab, select Custom URL from the Link Setting drop-down, and then choose the Site URL from the Dynamic Tags drop-down. This ensures that when a user clicks on your Elementor Sticky Header logo, they will be redirected to the home page of your website. And if you wish to redirect to a different page, simply enter the URL of that page in this field. After that, switch to the Style tab, set the width to 100%, and adjust the maximum width according to your preference. Next, switch to the Advanced tab, and enter the same class name as mine in the CSS Classes field. Now, duplicate the Logo 1 element twice, and rename the duplicated elements as Logo 2 after scroll and Logo 3 mobile menu respectively. After that, change the logo image and CSS class in the Advanced Settings tab of the Logo 2 after scroll and Logo 3 mobile menu elements. Here, if you don't want the logo to change after scrolling in your sticky header, make sure to keep the same version of the logo in both Logo 1 before scroll and Logo 2 after scroll elements. However, remember to change the CSS class of the second and third copies of the logo to mine, as well as change the logo image of the Logo 3 element. Similarly, if you want to display the same logo in all three positions that is before scrolling, after scrolling, and mobile menu, then make sure to keep the same version of the logo in all three image widgets. However, make sure to change the CSS classes of the logo elements as shown. Additionally, ensure that all three versions of the logo have the same dimensions to avoid any shift in the header after scrolling. Next, within the menu container, insert a WordPress menu and an HTML widget, and follow the remaining steps as I demonstrate. Now, switch to the Advanced tab, and enter the same CSS ID and class as shown here. Next, expand the Custom CSS option and paste the Custom CSS code snippet for the WordPress menu. Now, select the HTML element from the Navigator, go to the Content tab, and then paste the HTML element code snippet. Moving on to the button container, you can use any widget you prefer, such as a search widget, button widget, countdown timer widget, etc. Please note that the timer shown in the demo header is not a native Elementor countdown timer widget. If you are interested in using my custom countdown timer widget, it is available for purchase on my Gumroad shop. For now, I will be using my custom Elementor countdown timer widget and a native button widget. Let me quickly add and customize both widgets.
Now that we have completed the customization for the desktop view, let's proceed with the customization for tablet and mobile devices. To do so, switch to the responsive mode in Elementor and follow along with the steps I demonstrate. Now that we have successfully created our Elementor Pro sticky header using the Flexbox layout, you may be interested in creating the same header from scratch using the default section column layout. To do so, please watch the next part of the video by clicking on the end screen video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. I look forward to seeing you in the next part of the tutorial.